What's happening? It says I'm live. Okay. Just waiting for myself. Can't be too long. Sorry. And once I've got this here, we'll be up and running. on that and expand this out and then hello so I don't know if I've got any noise yet so can anybody hear say hi if you can or rather say you can hear me if you can so hi hi from Cork cool hi from Perth <laughs> and Portugal and South Africa so, ah, neat, excellent, okay. So now I've just got to wait for um, Paul to say all good to go, and then we'll launch right into it. So um, I'll talk a bit about myself, which is usually my worst nightmare, like my annual life is not to be noticed, but at the same time, I'm a bit of a show pony, so I don't know, everyone likes phrase, why wouldn't you? But, <laughs> you know. Um, so my favorite thing is working with modeling chocolate. I work with, I like to work with all sorts of different mediums. I really like to uh, experiment and find ways to use all sorts of different mediums. Um, I figure the more mediums that you're familiar with and the more different techniques you can collect, the quicker you're able to problem solve if you're making a client cake and you come up against a, an unusual problem. So um, I first started making modeling chocolate flowers, well, um, actually after I saw Paul do a demo in uh, Perth a long time ago, so he was doing um, his kind of swirl cake and um, I've always made uh, icing roses, they're not amazing, but um, yeah, my, my sugar flower work is, it's fine, uh, it's definitely got better over time, but um, a large part of that was just playing with chocolate, so and I think a large part of it as well is just also um, like not knowing what is and isn't possible. So the first kind of real full on chocolate thing that I made was this beastie. She's several years old now, but um, what is relevant about her is the tiny little flowers. Um, so the tiny, tiny little flowers in the hair are all made of modeling chocolate. So she's all modeling chocolate. And, Again, she is quite ancient. She's really crusty and gross. But um, she just has been, well, she's going in the bin now, but she's just been living on my, hey, good to go, yay, sweet. Okay, so I'll launch right in then. But she's just been living on my mantelpiece for a couple of years, which is kind of gross, but you know, you get that. So that morphed very quickly into uh, ultra detailed roses. So um, these were born out of panic and then I built out from there so I'll jump right into it because if you let me talk and once I relax I won't stop um, yeah so I'll jump right in and here we go swing that around and we'll see if we can see anything so hey now we're getting somewhere nice okay and we'll just tilt that and go a little bit closer so you can see a bit better. Now, if you're having a bad time, let me know because I can fix it. Uh, I can't fix it if I don't know. So, righty ho then. Um, now, these flowers that I like to make are basically lollipops. So, uh, lollipop sticks with a cake pop. Um, Cake pop center and I like these because I can jam them into a cake and they come together really really fast and they taste good so uh, also they're completely edible so aside from the lollipop stick but I've got no problem uh, putting these all over a wedding cake and leaving the premises because I know that 
no one's going to be confused by it. So anyway, I'll just put that back and I'll launch right in. I'll go as fast as I can because um, otherwise I won't get finished. So these start with a uh, Rice Krispie treat because why wouldn't they? These are the unicorn brand, <laughs> well rather unicorn flavor, Rice Krispie treat. And I do like using the Kellogg's ones. Yes, I know you can make them and this is incredibly lazy, but it's just, it's easier. One of the cool things about this is you can get all the different flavors. So if you get the chopped chip ones or the, um, uh, what do you call them? So you get the chopped chip ones or you get the cocoa ones with the little chocolate beanies in them. You can kind of make them more of a selling point. So, hey Sydney, hello everybody. So, and I'm just crunching these together. So what I need to do is build a really firm surface to hang quite a heavy flour off. So. You crunch them in together really good, and this is why I get the actual branded ones. Although the only, reasons I've, the only reason I've got the unicorn ones is my mum picked them up cheap for me and grabbed 20 packs because I do a lot of workshops and demos around the town, so um, it just makes my life a little bit easier. Now, yeah, unicorn rice krispies, they're, they're just kind of wrong really, but they actually don't taste bad. So, I mean, they're not winning a prize for like culinary arts, but you know, you get that. Now I'm using a scalpel and I'm going in on a 45 degree angle and just twitching up at the top of the lollipop stick. So what I'm doing is creating like a little pine cone shape at the top of the lollipop stick so that the stick has something to, or rather the um, chocolate that I'm going to use to adhere the, uh, the Rice Krispie to has something to grab hold of. Otherwise it'll just slide straight on through. So I don't know if you can see that, maybe, possibly, with any luck and a bit of imagination. Yeah, we'll go with that. So here we go. And I'll just poke that in the bottom. Now, I usually use my own modeling chocolate because I'm incredibly cheap. So I like to make it myself. Uh, my recipe is uh, really simple. It's four parts, oh sorry, what am I on about? Yeah, 4.5 parts of white compound chocolate to one part um, corn syrup. And the corn syrup, it's, it's just, yeah, tends to make a nicer product. I do have a recipe for uh, modeling chocolate with uh, glucose, but the glucose tends to, it still makes a nice product, but it just takes a lot longer to get a nice smooth product. So um, these sticks are made of paper. I do have a plastic one as well. I prefer the paper ones. I just figure it's a bit better for the environment. Um, and where are we? So I'm getting that as warm as I can. Again, slight panic because I'm not unfamiliar with like demonstrating, but yeah, just a little bit nervous. And here we go. Now, weirdly, having warm hands is actually a bonus for chocolate because it means you can melt things together quicker. So I'm just loading that little uh, sausage of chocolate into the hole that I've created and I've widened that hole out a bit and just poking it in there so that there's chocolate that will grab hold of the rough end of the stick. So poke that in, and you want that to go to about halfway up the, um, up the ball. So uh, compound chocolate, um, it's basically just not the curvature chocolate, so you don't need to temper it. The only reason I use covert, um, compound chocolate is it's cheaper, but also it tends to melt a lot smoother and it's a lot easier to work with. And just, Push that all in nice and tidy, make a nice tidy little bum end and make sure that that's secure. Now, if I leave that for five minutes, that will come back to room temperature and that will set up firm. So my preference is usually working with homemade modeling chocolate, but just because again, super, super cheap. Um, but uh, the one that I'm using at the moment is called Chocolate. And the reason I like to use this for demos is I can pre-prepare a lot. It's a little bit unusual for a modeling chocolate because it stays slightly flexible, but it still sets up like a rock. So it's just really nice to work with. Um, so now I'm going to, I've already pre-prepared a lot so that you guys don't have to watch me roll out like 36 petals because you'll lose the will to live watching me. But um, corn flour, uh, chucks cloth and blob of warmed up modeling chocolate. And normally I'd roll out a huge sheet, 
So a massive, massive sheet, but again, I'm trying to respect the uh, amount of repetition that will come from this. So, and let's see. Okay. Ooh. Interestingly, um, the compound chocolates you can get these days, the white compound chocolates have improved a lot. The Nestle used to be almost inedible and then they fixed up the recipe so it actually tastes like food now. So, hey, bonus. Um, they, I don't know what they did to the recipe, but it's actually quite pleasant. And my favorite is probably the Calibo, just because it's it actually tastes really, really good. So if you're doing this, um, where are we? You want three kind of uh, fat petal cutters, and you want to have the central one, about the same size as your center, one that's about a quarter the size of the center bigger, and then one that's just a bit smaller. So again, and I quite like these ones. Um, I've got hundreds of really nice cutters, but I just use these ones because I really like the um, overall shape and size of them. Um, I even have cutters made, but I don't know, I just keep going back to these. These are leaf cutters and I'm using the bum end of them. So I'll stop waffling and just cut, um, cut. And, whoop, cut. So usually I'd, I just use my fondant sheeter because I'm lazy and I'm usually in a blind panic or just trying to knock out as many of these as possible. Um, if I'm in a real hurry, so I do what, what's called a panic rose and it's basically the same process but with several steps removed and I end up with something like this. So this is a rose that takes about two minutes and I don't think I'll have time to actually show these. I really wanted to but um, it just it comes up really really nicely. Um, now then, what am I doing? So once you've got all of these set up, so imagine that you've got 12 of each size. And I'll show you one in a second, but so you've got 12 of each size. Don't worry about the smallest one. That's just from that set. So 12 of each size and the numbers aren't really that important, but you'd cut them all out, stack them all up, a little bit of corn flour. Um, it's kind of fascinating how much corn flour the modeling chocolate can take. Uh, if you were to add the amount of modeling chocolate, um, yeah, if you were to add the amount of modeling chocolate, uh, corn flour to sugar paste that I had to modeling chocolate, you would have ruined your sugar paste. So now I'm just ball tooling the edge of all of these. So I turn them over and ball tool each side. So I want kind of the core of the petal quite fat and the very edges quite thin. So I'm just on the mat, nip around the edge, on the mat, nip around the edge. And can you use something like candy melts or similar? Compound chocolate is candy melts. So, yeah. It's just, if you can buy compound chocolate um, like in bulk, it's a lot cheaper than buying pre-colored candy melts. Um, there's just no benefit to buying candy melts, in my humble opinion. But then again, now I can be a bit of a snob about some things, which is completely unfounded because I'm also the cheapest human on the planet. So <laughs> anyway, um, so now I've got all of these. What I'd do is stack these all up. So I'd have three piles of ball tooled petals, put them all off to one side. And then I need my uh, veining tool. So there's a couple of different ways that you can vein these. I've got a just generic um, peony veiner. I've got this one because I particularly like the uh, depth of the veins and it tends to give me something that looks a bit more like a damask rose. Um, it's not botanically correct. You can use the botanically correct ones, but why would you? It's just, nah, I kind of like the ones that I've got. Um, so uh, one way that you could do this if you don't have a nice set of veiners is use a veining stick and just on the edge, just run that over the edge, turn it over, run that over the edge and that's enough. So that'll do it. But if you can get hold of like a really good generic petal veiner, um, you can use it for several flowers. Now, the other reason that I didn't want to do this a um, hundred times was, uh, I'll show you, because the camera wibbles each time I stomp it. So um, here's some I prepared earlier. Brace yourself. Um, so, right, here's all my petals and Let's see. Let's 
Yeah, candy melts can be difficult. Um, usually the reason for that is that you're working with really small quantities and it's hard to um, heat and cool small quantities. So um, I almost never make less than two liters or I don't know what that is in other amounts, but um, almost never make less than two liters of modeling chocolate at a time. And if freezes, it stores for ages. Um, so I'll stomp all of these and I lay out my paper towel and line them all up on the paper towel. So I'll try and get all the veins up the same way. And yep, veins up all the same way, just because it makes it a little bit more uniform. And then what I like to do, so once I've got all my petals cut out, and this is the cool thing you can do with um, these. So normally you'd only have two or three of these as like a statement flower. Um, the paste that I'm using, it's called Choc It. Um, but yeah, generally I just use my own. Um, the reason that I've chosen the Choc It is that it stays a little bit flexible even once it's set. Um, if I'm using my own, I have to waste time warming it up on, um, yeah, have to waste time warming it up on my hands so that it's flexible, otherwise it just cracks. So that's uh, something that's actually, I make a really ripping firm modeling chocolate. So now I'm vamping because I've forgotten what I'm up to. So here we go. Yeah, sleep deprivation is fun. Anyway. Yes, most cake decorators are familiar with that. Um, so what I've got is a quick approach to coloring. Uh, it's a little bit lazy, but I tell you what, it works. So why wouldn't you? Um, I generally don't like using sparkly luster dusts on flowers, but just for this one, because of how uh, the color gets pressed into the petal, I will. So. What I do is just start with quite a wide brush. Now I've got all of these lined up so that all the petal tops are together, all the petal bum ends are together. And then I can just run across the tops of the petal so my brush is low on a low angle and I'm using the side of the brush to highlight the veins. And just to highlight the veins, pick up the rest from the plate. And you can see this is a way that you can do a lot of these. These have been sitting out for about five hours, by the way. They've been rolled and pressed. And this is why I quite like this as a method for decorating these. So just it saves a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, I. it is a really good way to dust. I still do this sometimes with um, with actual sugar flowers oh, and then you just want to flip them all over and this is why I uh, pre-prepped this because the flipping them all over takes ages so you just use your brush to pick up the edge of them and turn them over and go across the top. Now the reason that I've got all the bum ends together and all the um, bottoms together is if I mix too much of the pink and brown it will, uh, sorry the pink and green it'll become brown and that's all right I don't mind a little bit of that but it's not great. So I don't know if you can see this because I'll go as fast as I can here. Yeah, I'm actually making good time, so that's fine. Uh, and there we go. So if I pick that up so you can see it, you can see how it picks up the um, veining quite well. I quite like the stripiness of it. So I'll just put that down there. Then, again, I make an overly bright uh, green. The way that I make this super bright green is with a moss green color and a brighter lemon yellow. Um, you can also use fluorescent um, green or fluorescent uh, yellow and add the moss green to it. Comes up really nicely. So I'll just take some of that and I don't bother to clean my brush in between because I don't mind it getting a bit of that pink through it. It just softens off the um, this is also why I go a bit brighter with the green, I'm trying to save time. So, and knock that across the bottom. So I used to work in IT um, and I do just my cake stuff on the side or I do um, workshops and demonstrations uh, when I could and uh, well, teach workshops and demonstrations when I could. And just recently I was very lucky I got um, 
offered a position at Bake Boss and it's a cake decorating supplies shop in um, Australia and I'm very, very lucky um, to be working with such a great crew. Um, they're very supportive and I'm surrounded by all sorts of shiny stuff that um, I am trying very hard not to buy all the time, so. Yeah, I did actually get the fondant sheeter before I started working there, so that was that was my like one really big ridiculous purchase. So yeah, my wife is very tolerant. <laughs> anyway, um, the other thing that you can do with this if you've got more time or if you actually care, I like to leave a little bit of white, but if you um, have more time, you can put like a little stripe of yellow through it or a stripe of orange through it. Um, you can do completely different colors. You probably don't need the green at the bottom of these, like really. Um, I just really quite like having the green at the bottom because it, um, it, it just feels more complete for me to uh, do it all that way. So that is all of my coloring done. Um, if I'm doing three of these, I would cut out all of the petals that I need for them. Um, so if I'm doing like three on a cake, I'd cut out all the petals, uh, ball tool them all, vein them all, color them all, all in one go, just have them all lined up on the table. Um, it's, I don't like to, <laughs> yeah, all the shiny things, Kelly, indeed. Um, yeah, I don't like having to come back and wait for things to dry, which is why I really like my modeling chocolate because it's pretty much instant. Like it's, uh, it's the modeling, uh, medium of the millennial. So anyway, uh, where will I go now? I want to go to here, lift that up there. It's going to grab all my littlies. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve-ish. Yeah, that's right. So now with the um, homemade paste, these would be very brittle, so I'd have to warm them up on my hand for ages so that they become flexible, and then I can work with them. Um, with the uh, bought stuff, it's uh, just so much better. So, so much better. And... Okay, just go around there. Now, what I'm doing is just thinning these off again. I know that I've already thinned them off and I've veined them, but doing this means that I can have a thicker petal and still give the illusion that it's super thin. Um, so I'm just going to go through and bolt all, all of these and I'm just running across the top of this. And what's cool about this is it kind of forces the color into the petal when I do this and it holds the Holds a pattern there. So um, here we go, where are we? There. So it sort of forces the color into the petal and it does flatten out the veins a bit, but because you've really highlighted them, you still got the illusion that there's more texture there than there actually is. And you get the bonus of having a super thin edge, which is always nice. So what have I clicked on? There we go. And Come on, go faster. Faster, faster. I've got to have the core finished by the time it hits half past. So, nice and quick. Well, I've got a little bit of leeway on that, but anyway. Um, you can put modeling chocolate in the refrigerator. Uh, there's no need to. Um, if you need to put your modeling chocolate in the refrigerator, you've probably made a modeling chocolate that's not firm enough for your environment. Um, I The 4.5 to 1 is a stupidly, stupidly um, firm mixture. So this is just water um, in an egg cup. And water will stick modeling chocolate. Um, it's kind of counterintuitive, but it works brilliantly. So same as if you're um, working with a modeling chocolate and you find that it's too brittle or it's just not smooth enough or not joining enough, dip your finger in a little bit of water and just knead it through the modeling chocolate and it fixes the texture. So um, while I'm sculpting, if it's a really hot day like today, it was 38 degrees. Like it was the hottest, um, hottest April day in Perth for a long time. And it's supposed to be spring, we, oh, sorry, autumn, and we are suffering. So, hot. So just on the very top of this, I want to start putting a petal. And, 
Yeah, the logo path. That's right. Um, oh, I seem to have stopped the scrolling, so I can't see what's going on. Um, woo, where are we? That one. Come on, show me new comments. Sorry about that. So yeah, no, I'm just putting the pedal on. I want the pedal tip to sit above, well, not that bit, but the top of the round part of the pedal to sit above the top. And I just start pressing down around the edges onto it. And then I'll put the next one on. And a little bit of water. So this one, like these layers are just about covering up that center bit. So when I put these on, I put the pressure on from either side and from the top and then press it down and then I tuck the bum in, end in. So a lot of people make the mistake of working from the bum end up and that gives you a flower that splays out instead of one that curves in and looks, um, looks a little bit more, I don't know, uh, complete. So these are quite a closed petal heavy rows. You can make one with a lot fewer petals. You don't need as many as this at all. So I'm just start with that center. Um, one thing that's really important with roses is as you build them, the petals need to get ever so slightly higher from the very center up to the top. Um, so they should all be more or less in line, but as if uh, they all meet in the middle again still. So uh, how can I explain it well? So when you're building them out, they should kind of form a very flat M and go up and out. And then as they start to, and that's while they're all cupping in, as they start to open out, they start to come down again. So I've got those petals on. Now I'm not worrying too much about interleaving them. It's just not necessary. And yeah, I've got videos and videos of me making modeling chocolate. Um, it's once you get the hang of it, it's not too hard. Uh, the glucose one is actually very nice, but it takes a few attempts to get it right. Okay, so I'm just building that out. And if you actually care, you can interleave these so that you make it, um, make it look right. So now when I'm putting these on, I start from, imagine the top there, line it up. So again, the petal is ever so slightly higher than the um, ones on the inside, or the tip of the petal would be where the center is if it was closed in. And I affix the petal on either side and then blend the sides of the chocolate down and tuck the bum end in. So if we pick that up and put that on. So when I put these on as well, you should be able to see down the back of the petal because I want to create as much space and as much room as possible. So I put it on and from the top third, start patting down, lock it all in, well, not quite that crazy but just so that you get a little bit of air and space behind it and then you tuck the bum end in so that you've still got that cup shape kept. And there we go. Um, you can make modeling chocolate with eating chocolate. It's just really, really brittle. You have to add a ton of water to it. I say a ton of water, like a teaspoon or so, but still, um, you've got to add loads of uh, water to it to fix the texture. And it's just more trouble than it's worth. Um, here we go. Uh, you certainly wouldn't do it with a nice eating chocolate like a lint or anything. It's just, it's really not worth it. And that's such an oily chocolate, it doesn't work. So I'm just going around still. So all I'm doing is just going around, trying to keep it more or less to um, like three, 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 three. And then just the last layer of the little ones goes out to about a five. Now the number of petals does not actually matter. Right? It really doesn't. As soon as you start to worry too much about um, having the petals all in a perfect um, alignment, um, the flower starts to look less realistic. So if you actually go out into the garden and look at a, oops, sorry, bumping you, um, go out into the garden and actually look at a couple of roses, they're a lot more gnarly and um, random than you'd expect them to be. So I'll just start this again. So what I'm doing when I'm doing this is I've got the veins going away from me, veins coming up. Um, so with the veins coming up, I 
run the ball tool around the edge and run the ball tool around the edge and go back because I want the backs of the pedals to flare out ever so slightly and then I just run down the top. So I'll do that again just because that didn't make any sense. <laughs> so um, I thin the pedal on both sides because I want a nice thin edge of the pedal. Run down the center so that I get the cup shape naturally form. Turn it over so that I've got the um, back of it and then just run around the edge again just to flare it back. So it doesn't have to be too much, but what you want is for the pedal to have a cup shape. Uh, the tip of the pedal shouldn't be bending back, like the very center of the pedal shouldn't be bending back, but just on either side of it, it should very slightly. Uh, one thing that usually goes wrong for me when I'm making these is I over frill the rose petals and it's kind of amazing how little frilling they need. They, especially these uh, inner ones, they barely have any movement at all and uh, you end up with a more natural looking flower with less movement in it, which is really weird. It's sort of counter to everything you learn otherwise. And one thing that I like to imagine when I'm doing these is like, if I can get my petals to look as kind of natural as a petal as possible before I apply them, then I'm going to be closer to having a good result. So just run around there, just keeping an eye on the clock. So there, run down, up around there. So this is why I sped up the middle section because there is a lot of repetition here and I start to run out of stories. <laughs> so, uh, here we go. Oy. assembling these. I want them nice and cupped and I'm sorry, keep bumping you. Are we still even all lined up? Yeah. And just down there. Then these ones, what I want to do with these is I apply them from the top again, but these are a little bit different, these ones. So I apply them from the top and I run down one edge really tightly from about a third of the way up or a third of the way from the top rather and two thirds of the way up really and then I leave the other side a little bit more open and then I pat it down into place and I don't think I've watered those water water lots of water I say lots of water you don't want to go too crazy with it um, you do actually pull some of the colouring off these but because it's been pounded in with the um, ball tool it doesn't really matter and also the areas where you're sticking it so again position it from the top so you can see what's happening about one third from the top start pressing down to blend it all in and leave that outside edge a little bit open because you want to have that air behind the pedal each time um, just remove any excess water on them and you never want these to be like slippery with water. So again, when I'm putting this on, I'm making sure I've got that column of air behind the back and just run down the side and down there. And I'm just aiming for about five pedals. Could be six, could be five. I always like to do a few extra pedals in case, uh, especially if you're working with your homemade modeling chocolate, in case it, um, breaks so and if they break with modeling chocolate it really doesn't matter you just kind of hold them together and they rejoin it's just a matter of getting the temperature through the pedal consistently so that's my center I'm just going to add another layer of five or six again it doesn't really matter um, I did interleave that as I, as I get further out I start to worry more about interleaving that so that just means you lift up the last one and tuck it in it doesn't 
it really doesn't make that much difference. If anyone's looking at your roses and can see that, they're looking too closely. And the idea of these is they're not competition work. They're fast, edible um, flowers that you can put on a, on a client cake or on a friend cake and they still look super, super impressive. And so with these, same thing again. So just start from that about halfway to a third along, tuck it down the side and put it on. These ones are a little bit more open. So same again. And when I'm spacing them, the overlap is a little bit more. One thing that a lot of people do, not necessarily wrong, but one thing that makes the um, petals not look as realistic is they'll bend the tops of the petals back all the way along so you get this really weirdly flat top and the, most roses tend to well not all of them because there's so much variety but most roses tend to look a bit better when they're a bit more cupped so I'll just uh, pop that on I need to get a bit of a wriggle on and here we go and Pick up that last one. And if you work quite fast and you keep all the petals relatively warm, they stay flexible. Again, this is just because this is a really flexible modeling chocolate, it's brilliant. Um, you do want to be a bit careful. Some of the uh, modeling chocolates are brilliant for sculpting faces or features, but uh, some of the commercial ones can be a little bit too soft. So I've just gone around the edges of that and I've just peeled the outside edge out a little bit more to open it. Um, no, the chocolate doesn't, well, the modeling chocolate is a seized chocolate, so um, seizing it's kind of irrelevant at that point. So um, it's just kind of a different emulsion. Um, just go here, here, here. So yeah, modeling chocolate, it's a really different medium to work with. Um, not a lot of people make flowers from modeling chocolate, but um, I recently found out about a lady who's been doing it for a uh, long, long, long time, like a decade or more. Um, her name's Mary Sanaga, and she does incredible modeling chocolate flowers, and it's just really cool to meet another person. So this is normally what I do with uh, my modeling chocolate flowers. So, oh, no modeling chocolate flowers with my modeling chocolate. I make little creatures from it because I can do them all in one sitting and they just come up really nice and smooth and you can correct them if you need to. Um, okay, so uh, fast, fast, focus, focus. I'm getting distracted. Two, three, stop faffing about. <laughs> um, so I'll just grab six of those because that'll be this layer. These are the big ones. Run around the edge, turn them over, run around the edge. Uh, hopefully you can see that, yep. And whoops. the other thing that's nice about this is if you do knock it over or if you do drop your flowers, it's not the end of the world. Uh, one thing that's really important is the weight of the flower is massive. So it's really quite heavy. You've got to make sure that you've got it holding onto the Rice Krispie um, treat really, really well. And that's why you carve those little bits into the... Um, into the stick. Um, 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 it's fine. Uh, so when you pick this up, you always pick it up by the stick. You never pick it up from the top because you'll pull the top off. Um, so I'm just going to run around the back of that, give it a bit of a curve. So that's quite a thick, heavy curve. And then just from the, from the tip, just turn those back and turn that over again. Coffee's repeating on me, <laughs> just from the top down, turn it over, give it a little bit of that. So again, I want that cup shape and the slight flare out to the pedal. So thin them out, thin them out from the bottom to the center and here we go. And run around. bottom yeah my my whole cake de decorating game really picked up when I found modeling chocolate I was always fairly competent but just in terms of being able to practice and 
if it doesn't work, just screw it up and start again is brilliant because it doesn't dry out. Like I said, these pedals have been sitting out for about six hours and there's no issues with them. So back to my water, little pen, and just down each side, just down each side. So with these ones, they get more of a bend um, on each side. Again, at this point, I can end up over frilling them. Um, less, is, less is better. I know it's weird, isn't it, with the water and the modeling chocolate. Um, I've tried all sorts of things and the, mod the water just works better. So, it's because the chocolate has quite a high sugar content. So now what I'm doing, these are starting to come out more. I can actually drop them slightly and just layer them like that. And you can see I'm still trying to maintain that column of air behind the pedal, except it's out more. Now I don't want the pedal to be like that shape. I want the pedal to be that shape and then the edges to be fringing out. So same thing again, just pat it down on the edge, tuck the bum end in, leave this side open a little bit more. And here we go. And Hey, it's Mary. Hey, how are you going? And down the side, tuck the bum end in. And again, down the side, tuck the bum end in. I'm starting to get a little bit flat with these, but it's all fine. And once more. One thing that you do need to get used to, I've usually got hands that are stupidly hot, like I melt everything I touch very, very quickly. So you get used to keeping things moving and not keeping your fingers in the same position. So just pick that up, pop that under there, pop that in there. And I can adjust this. If I was working with a homemade modeling chocolate, it would be starting to set up. So I'd have to get the pedal shape that I want now. Um, otherwise, um, Chocolate ganache using water instead of cream. Yeah, definitely, it's fine. But, uh, here we go. Uh, next one, seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'll go for about seven of those. And so same again. And you can see how like just fairly uniform that's coming together. It's not uh, the most incredible rose, but it'll do, like it's fine. And just drop that down there again. Sorry, now I'm getting distracted. Come on, go faster. Let's get this one finished. I don't wanna be pushing out the next person. Done, turn over. How good were the demos today though? Really enjoyed them. Like especially the, I love modeling, like the flowers aren't, <laughs> I keep saying flowers aren't my forte, but end up doing an awful lot of them. Um, Flowers have become something that I really enjoy doing. Yeah. Yeah, my hands are stupidly hot. I seriously melt anything I touch. So it's actually a bonus for modeling chocolate if you work with a really firm modeling chocolate um, or you find a brand that works well for you. Uh, I've not finished yet. Uh, so I want to get these really cup shaped so I just top to bottom, turn them over and just give that a little bit of shaping. I keep making these like I'm making peonies anyway. So bend that back from the top. So you think of it like a rooftop, but bending back, that doesn't make any sense at all, but you get the idea. Um, so my thought with this is that if I get the petals as pretty as possible before I put them on, then I've got more chance of it looking like an actual rose. Uh, even though I'm not using a botanically correct rose veiner and this technique is very odd, it all, it all works, it all comes together. Here we go, just keeping an eye on my time. And here we go, top to bottom, bend it back. And that'll do.
So one of the nice things about working for a cake decorating supplies shop is I get to try all the different pastes. <laughs> so I've tried the Saracino. Um, I really like their um, pasta scultura. I'm not a fan of their just basic modeling chocolate for flowers, but again, I, I tend to use their flowers. Um, why am I frilling them twice? So that I get a really thin edge. Um, I want the edge as thin as possible so that they look as realistic as possible. I'm actually kind of frilling them three times. So. And the reason for that is just it gives me a much better look. So I'm just running the water down each edge and then, then down the center. And yeah, it is an excessive amount of work, but they're still a pretty quick flower. Like for something that looks like you actually care, it's, it's not too bad. And here we go, getting there. I'm just keeping an eye on the time. I'm not too far off finishing. So now these ones, because I want the bum end to look tidier, I go from the bottom and then run up the side and leave that side open a bit. And next one. And oh, I keep trying to close them off on both sides and it doesn't really work that well. So again, run down the side. And this is where having warmer hands helps because it lets you just fuse the chocolate onto itself really quickly. And again, if I was using my own homemade chocolate, I'd be having to spend a bit of time warming the petals up really quite carefully. Uh, this is just because this is uh, my favorite one for demoing. Because uh, I get that little bit more flex to it. And nearly there from the bum end up. And you can see the, the green does actually get quite muddy looking, which is why I like to go a super stupidly bright green because it just kind of, uh, it helps to combat that muddiness. I could just be more careful and not get them muddy in the first place, but you know, the, where's the fun in that? So here we go. And from the bottom, up the side. And peek that open again. Yeah, it's kind of, um, I was saying earlier in our little group chat, this is kind of a nice full circle moment for me because um, the first time my roses really started to come together and look like I know what I'm doing was after watching one of Zoe Clark's demos and she was showing how she makes hers. And just with the whole, I was sticking too rigidly to specific numbering and it's just not relevant. You really just don't need to. So that's all come together reasonably well. So what I like is with these, you can see I've started, they come out quite wide. As soon as they start to come out wide, you just drop them down. Yeah, you have to talk to Kevin Martin. I'm sure that he can get it out to you. He's brilliant. Uh, Kevin the Cake Profiler, love chocolate. It's so nice. Um, so yeah, anyway, what I was getting on about was as soon as the petals start to come out and down, you open it. Um, Nah, I've just run out of words, it's too late at night. <laughs> oh, they start to open out more. Like if, if these were the same height as that and uh, opening out, or if these were closed in, uh, I couldn't have them down that, that far, they would look wrong. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking myself into a, into a hole I can't dig myself out of, so. Uh, it's fun when you run out of words. So I'm going to just pop a calyx on this and finish up and I should be right. Uh, again, I'm just keeping an eye on it because I know that I uh, want to give the next person time to have a bit of an intro and you probably don't want to hear a deranged, tired redhead waffling on this much this late at night because I'll start to just repeat myself or start a story and never finish it. <laughs> so, uh, turn that out. So each time I roll this, I'm picking it up and turning it over because otherwise it will stick to the bench. Um, yeah, I used water to stick the petals. I used water to stick my chocolate, it's fine. There's a couple of different things you can do with the chocolate. You can use, um, you can use Tylo's glue, you can use um, 
Uh, which which calyx do I use? Uh, here's one, it'll do. Random calyx just hanging out on the table. It's fine. And uh, here we go. This is where you just watch the thoughts leave my brain. Grr. It's all fine. Alright, you hop over there for a sec. Uh, ordinarily, you'd thin this and vein it and make it look like you care. But we're in a hurry here. <laughs> so, and where'd I throw that brush? So I've still got a little bit of pink on this brush, it's fine. Uh, come on, colour up nice. Uh, no, they don't remain flexible for very long. Uh, if it's your own modelling chocolate, uh, they remain flexible for about 20 seconds and then they set rock solid. Um, with the chocolate, it's just the way that the chocolate's made. Um, they stay flexible for a little bit. The um, Saracino Pasta Scultura stays flexible for quite a long time. The Saracino modeling chocolate, I don't recommend for flowers because it's too soft. It's breathtakingly wonderful for sculpting figures and faces and things like that, but or for covering, but it's just too soft for me. Um, you can find my modeling chocolate recipe and a whole heap of videos of me just waffling rubbish about modeling chocolate on robertscakesandcooking.com. Most of it's accurate. <laughs> so, um, yeah, knock yourself out. It's not, not terrible information on there. And here we go. So I've got my dark side and my light side. The light side's usually on the inside. Just paint a bit of that. That will take the color off like you can see, but it doesn't really matter. Pick that up, drop it through. And then just press that up onto the flower. And yeah, I'd normally like to have a thinner, um, oh, am I even on the screen? And it's all good. Yeah, I'd normally like to have a thinner calyx on these, but you know, you can't have everything. And come on, fast, fast. Let's drop a hip on it. How long have I got? Uh, 2.53, right, so. I'll give it another two minutes and then you'll be rid of me. And I'll just get Paul to pop into the chat and say something if I need to get off, get off. Yeah, acutely aware that you've got other folks. So drop that on there. And that will start to stick to my fingers. So just quickly, quickly. And this looks dirty because of all the green and red that I've got on my hands, but that's fine and pull that down and just a quick dusting of green ah faster no i put the other green away put the lid back on it it'll do so that's fine now what i do like to do is just add a little bit of green to the very edges of these um it's only really with my pink ones um or the light pink ones with some of the others, I'll uh, add a darker color or a, a lighter color or contrasting color just to the edges. It just highlights it and makes it look like you care. And there we go. Just brings it out a little bit. Makes it look a bit more sun-kissed and like it's um, had a bit of life. So here we go. Hey, Greg, how are you going? And uh, squidge that down. I could make a nicer hip than that, but again, timing. So that is that. Now, if I really want to get fancy about it, I can put a little bit of a water droplet on with, oh, my corn syrup has started to set just with a little bit of corn syrup, just on the edge. There we go. And yeah, it looks like it's had a water droplet. Oop. No, my corn syrup is really starting to set. But it's just a nice kind of addition. I don't know if you can even see that. Probably not, but anyway. Um, so that's that. That's uh, modeling chocolate rose. Um, like really excessive, uh, but still can be all done in one shot. Uh, this is a red one. So with my red, I've just run over it with a um, 
uh, what's the word I'm after, with a, a pink, like a magenta, and a yellow, and then I just hit it with a blowtorch, or barbecue lighter, because at the moment my blowtorch is out of gas, and I can't get gas for it. So, and that just sets the colour in. So you can also steam them, but what I like to do with these is hit them with the blowtorch very quickly. You don't want to hit them for too long because they will melt. It is still chocolate. And it's just like steaming it. The reason I don't like to steam it is the steam sets on the petals and the petals just collapse out. So that sets the colour in and really brightens it all up. So um, that's that. And 256, one last, last thing and then I'll escape. So peony petals, uh, same process as the rose, except we just use a smaller ball tool, uh, run around the edges of them to thin them run around the edges of them to thin them, and then take the ball tool, and just, I wanna get the really frilled, ridiculous, strappy edges. I've probably got too small a ball tool. And just run from the top to the bottom, and it cups it, bottom to the top, and it cups it, and bottom to the top. Again, this is that same um, concept of, if I create, uh, ribs in it, it'll hold itself up better, but also um, if I create a petal that looks a little bit more uh, realistic, it will go on the cake or on the um, cake pot better and look like a, a nicer completed product. So that same process, and now I am getting off, that exact same process that we've done for the rose works for any um, other flower that doesn't need uh, wiring. So I'll give this a crack on a pom-pom chrysanthemum, but this is a dahlia, exactly the same process, just slightly different folding. And the peony, again, exactly the same process, just slightly different folding. So uh, again, taco uh, frillies, and these ones bend in like that. These ones kind of fold out the other way with the taco. So anyway, thanks so much. Again, I'm Robert from Robert's Cakes and Cooking or from Bake Boss Australia. If you've got any questions, um, ask them in the thread, I'll answer them all. Thank you so much, uh, Paul and David, for um, inviting me to be part of this. I really appreciate it. What you guys are doing is an incredible, incredible thing. It gives people something to do. It gives something to, like, takes people's mind off uh, what is going on in the world. And it also keeps people safe by staying at home and working on fun projects like this. So love you all, and I will chat with you again soon. Bye. And how do I stop the feed? Lol. <laughs>